Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing configuring the SRX as a DHCP server with JWeb Learning Byte. Okay, so here is our example. In this example, we have a few different things I do want to point out. First of all, we have the SRX device in the middle. That's SRX1. And that device is connecting to the internet then it's connecting to the server zone, and it's also connecting to the user zone at the bottom. And in this setup, we have a few different devices. In the user zone, we have user one and printer one. And in the server zone, we have server one. Now, all of these devices, they need IP addresses. And so we are going to turn the SRX1 device into DHCP server. Now, something I do want to point out is that all of the devices have their MAC addresses listed on the slide. Now that's important because printer one will require a static DNS binding, whereas the other devices, user one and server one, will randomly be assigned an IP address from their respective pools. Now something else I do want to point out is that the user zone, which is at the bottom, is using the 10.1.1.0 slash 24 subnet, and the gateway there, which is the SRX device, is going to be 10.1.1.1. Then the server zone, which is on the right with server 1, is using the 172.29.1.0 slash 24 subnet. And the SRX device, which is going to act as the default gateway for the server zone, is using the 172.29.1.1 address. So with that being said, let's jump to the right of the slide that shows the criteria for the example. For this, we need to configure SRX1 as the DHCP server. We are going to define two separate pools. There's going to be a user pool and a server pool. With the user pool, we're going to use the prefix of 10.1.1.0 slash 24, the gateway of 10.1.1.1, and the DNS server of 8.8.8.8. With the server pool, we're going to use the prefix of 172.29.1.0/24, gateway of 172.29.1.1, the DNS server of 8.8.8.8, and the range of 172.29.1.100 to 172.29.1.200 for that pool. Now, something I do want to point out is if you look at the first pool versus the second pool, we are using a range in the second pool. And that range in the second pool doesn't include the gateway address, which for obvious reasons, we don't want to include the gateway address. However, if you look at that first pool, we don't have a range that excludes that gateway address. And so what's going to happen there? Well, the system's smart enough to realize that it's not going to hand out the gateway address. So there's no need to worry about it. It's not going to hand out 10.1.1.1 for the user pool even though we are not assigning a range that excludes that gateway address. Okay, so last thing says end devices should randomly be assigned IP addresses from their respective pools, except printer one, which needs the 10.1.1.100 address. So we'll have to set up a static host binding for that. Now, something I do want to point out is with your servers, you would probably do this too. Your servers probably need an IP address that isn't going to change possibly. The users, not such a big deal. They may come and go they probably have laptops, and so they'll get whatever IP address here at the office. They'll take it home, get a different IP address. So that's not such a big deal. But with things like printers, servers, you'd probably want to do that, have a static host binding. However, for the sake of keeping this learning byte shorter, we're going to exclude uh, configuring that for server one. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface for SRX1 and get this started. All right, so here is the JWeb interface for SRX1. Let's go ahead and jump to the network workspace, then DHCP, then DHCP server. Okay, so to begin, we need to first create some DHCP pools. So let's click the Create button for the DHCP pools section. And here, let's create the user pool to begin with. And here, the address is going to be 10.1.1.0. And we need to make this a slash 24. And then let's configure the DHCP attributes. And under here, we have a mess of attributes we can configure, but most of them are optional. Most of these are gonna have default parameters and whatnot, such as the maximum lease time. And then you'll have other parameters such as boot file that, unless you have a boot file, you should just leave that empty. But what we need to configure is first, we need to configure a DNS name server. So let's configure that, click the create button. And that was just 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. 
And then we need to configure the gateway router. And that's going to be 10.1.1.1. Again, there's a bunch of other things we can configure, but we don't need that for this learning byte. And then we need to configure a static binding. Let's click the Create button. And this is going to be for printer one. We have to put in the MAC address. Then put in the IP address we want it to have, and that is going to be 10.1.1.100. Click OK. And we're done with that pull. And then we need to configure another pull, the servers pull. Specify the network for it. That again is a slash 24. And then let's configure the DHCP attributes. And again, the DNS server. Then the gateway router. And again, there's a lot of other things we can configure here, but it's unnecessary for this learning byte. But just keep in mind, if you need to configure DHCP attributes, this is the spot to do it in JWeb. Then we need to configure an address range. Click the create under address range. We need to name the range. We'll call this servers range. And it gives us the network prefix, the, the whole prefix by default, or rather all of the IPs in the prefix. But here we want to go from the dot 100 to the dot 200 for our range. Click OK again. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to configure DHCP groups so we can tell the SRX which interface to use for these different pools. So under DHCP groups, click Create, and we'll call this group user. And then how it works is it ties it to the interface that is participating in that range or that prefix. So for example here, we want to configure GE000 for the user group because Gigi000 has 10.1.1.1 slash 24. So the SRX knows that it can hand out those IP addresses from that pool, the user pool, which is 10.1.1.0 slash 24, as far as the network address, and everything will work out there. So let's click OK again. Then we need to create a group for the servers. Create group name, we call the servers. And it's going to be Gigi001. Click OK again. Okay, so we're done with creating the DHCP groups. Now, something I do want to point out is if we have a DHCP pool selected, it's going to give us a little bit of information. We can see in the bottom part of this workspace if any DHCP address range is configured for the pool. With this one, there's none. And also DHCP static bindings for the pool. And with this one, it's printer one. Now, if we select servers, we can see that the servers range for the DHCP address range pool is present and there's no DHCP static bindings for the pool either. So just keep that in mind. You can select different ones to find out different information. So let's go ahead and commit that configuration. OK, so now that we have that configuration committed, let's jump to the VR device that I have set up that is acting as a device of multiple different virtual routers that represents each of the devices in the topology. That is the user one, printer one, and server one device. OK, so here is the VR device that is split up into those multiple end devices that I was talking about. And right now, those interfaces are disabled for those end devices. So let's go ahead and commit the configuration. That will enable them. And now that that commit is complete, let's go ahead and look at those interfaces to see if they did receive an IP address through DHCP. Yes, it looks like those three interfaces did. The first interface that we see is the Gigi004 interface here. That's acting as the user one device, and that's getting the 10.1.1.3 IP address. And then the Gigi005 interface, which is acting as the printer one device, is getting the 10.1.1.100 IP address. Now, that was the static host binding there. So keep that in mind that we are giving it the correct IP address. And then Gigi006 which represents the server one device, is getting the 172.29.1.101 address. Now keep in mind the range that we're using is 100 to 200, so that makes sense. That's something within that range. So let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb interface for SRX1 and look at some DHCP information. 
Okay, so here is the JWeb interface. Let's go ahead and jump to the monitor workspace, then DHCP, then DHCP server, and we can see here we have some information in this workspace, and that's fantastic. This is what we want to see. We can see those three different IP addresses that we saw on the VR device. And we can see here that the hardware address is also shown when the DHCP binding expires, the current state and the interface that it's located out of. And then if we look towards the bottom of the workspace, we can see some statistics for message counters for sent and received statistics. And we can hover over the individual bars in the bar graph and we can see we have seven boot reply messages. We have three DHCP offer messages. We have four DHCP ACK messages and all the other messages are at zero. And that's fine, that's what is expected. And then we click received. We have similar information. We have boot requests received, DHCP discover, there's five of them, DHCP request, seven of them, and other statistics as well, which are at zero. And then on the far right, we do have a total of drop packets, which is at zero, which is great. We don't wanna have anything in this scenario. So this brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure the SRX as a DHCP server using JWeb. And we also demonstrated how to verify DHCP server functionality using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.